Thank you. I'm really excited for this last one. I feel like I have so much to say and hopefully I can remember everything and fit it all in everything that I'm going to say. So we can start. Waking up this morning is awesome. Renee went home last night and I could not be happier. When Frank called her out on her freaky costume, So yeah, they were like every minute of it. <laughs> they were like in a really good mood. Last night it came down to just me and Renee. Frank definitely gave me a warning that he doesn't know where we're at. Lately, I feel like you've been getting a little lost in the mix. Yeah, so I am just like I need to figure out if we can in panic mode at this point. I'm just like step it up and try and help Frank figure out where we're at. Like, cause I'm like I've seen like what happened to Christy, what had happened to Jenny, what had happened to Renee. And so I'm just like, I don't know like how much longer I can do this or like what's gonna like happen to me. Um like I could tell like things were just kind of like slipping away from from me. <laughs> Did something give it away that it was your week? Um, well, I mean, you'll see like what happens, but um, like, <laughs> but basically like up to this point, what I had been doing was playing along with the show, just like, because I came into this, um, as I said in the first episode, not having a plan. Like, I don't have a plan. I'm just going with the flow, seeing what's happening. And so, like, what I decided to do was just, like, play this game as the real me and Hirsch. Um, and that was, like, where I was at at this point. But, like, I, you know, I started to think of this more as, like, an art piece and not just, you know, what's going to happen with me and Frank. And so I was like, okay, I have to somehow take control of this situation. Um, so first of all, Carrie is an amazing singer. She's actually a really, really good singer. And she does not have stage fright at all. That was like, she was told to like purposely like lose this competition because she has such a good voice. She would have won, um, but she was told to lose this competition. Um, I think, I forget who told me that, but someone told me that. Yeah, so that's like all a setup because at this point they don't want Carrie to keep winning because she's supposed to go to the end. So they don't want it to be so obvious. Um, I'm paired with Melissa. I'm still pissed off that she was telling everyone yesterday. I thought they liked each other, but I guess, I it up and make I guess not. <laughs> until we win this thing. Nelly, They're just two very outgoing people. And that leaves Dana and Annie. I mean, we rocked the sale <laughs> challenge and the baseball challenge. I was actually really friendly with Dana. She was a lot of fun. She was a sweetheart, so I was happy to be with Dana. Um, sleeping in. She was a fun time. Uh, Frank loves what? All these topics are great. But yeah, so basically like we had to like make up a song to these uh, things. And I'm pretty sure that I was actually supposed to win this competition, um, but we'll see like what happens. Um, but basically I was like, I have to exert control over my performance, whatever that is here somehow. Otherwise I wouldn't feel like it, I was doing a performance piece and I wanted to like interrupt this space somehow. 
Um, and I didn't want them to like humiliate me. I wanted to like do it on my own terms. This one is for you. I'm teamed up with Annie Banani and I'm so excited to be working with her. She's such a sweet girl. And I know that Aww, she's teamwork, thanks, Dana. and I feel really good about this. Cause I lost track of time. Hey, then it's okay. This is where you wanna be. Nothing dream or even fantasy. I'm really nervous. Like Dana doesn't have the best voice. Terrible handwriting. I'm dreaming of you. <laughs> Or Donkey Kong. Which one Mario actually gets? The only thing I know about Donkey Kong is. is he throws the barrel at someone. Melody and I have no idea about I also, like, didn't think that, that I would have any chance at process. winning this, but I'm pretty sure I was supposed to win this challenge. Um, like, Frank told me after the show ended that I was supposed to make it to the final three. Um, but obviously, because of what happens in this episode, I didn't. But, like, basically what he had said was, like, he, like, really liked me, just, like, as a person and so they decide I was supposed to originally leave the show around this point what the hell? <laughs> but because Frank liked me so much and I think the producers ended up really liking me and like what I was doing on the show they like wanted to keep me to the final three that was the plan and Frank was like you ruined it or whatever <laughs> But I'm always like, oh, do I like regret not staying on to the final three? But it's just like, no, <laughs> what would I have like gained from that? <laughs> it would have been more fun. Well, it was, it's like the way I describe being on reality TV is both like, thrilling and traumatizing at the same time like every day is an adventure it's a thrill like you don't know what's going to happen it's exciting but it's also like traumatizing and nerve-wracking because you don't know what's going to happen you don't know how they're going to embarrass you they don't know what like they're going to make you do if you did stay how do you anticipate that Terrence's visit would have gone i thought about that because um i like wonder who they would have brought I think my brother and my dad, they both said they would have done it. And like, honestly, I'm, I'm really glad that I didn't have to drag my family into this because it's just like, it's humiliating in a way, like the way that the editing treats you. And I didn't want, I didn't want production to humiliate my family in any way, even though I had, I had chosen to sub subject myself to the humiliation, but I didn't want them to humiliate my family in any way although they probably wouldn't have um also my brother um is like in some ways even more subversive than i am with a lot of things he says so that would have made me nervous um oh yeah okay so on so there was a long bus ride to this challenge and me and Dana sat all the way in the back of the bus and we were practicing and rehearsing and it was on this long this long bus ride that I knew what I was gonna do and I told Dana I said all right Dana like I'm not gonna win this show they're trying to get rid of me anyway so I'm gonna take matters into my own hand and I'm gonna like invent this like dirty rap song that like I'm gonna sing and Dana was like supportive because she knew that like, she knew that like, obviously if I did that, that I was gonna get voted off, which was great for her because then she's safe. So she was like, yeah, yeah, you should do this. You should do this, it'd be so funny. So like we made this whole plan on the way here um, that I would do this. And, you know, we're mic'd all the time. And um, maybe we might not have been mic'd, going there but there was always a camera in the van just to capture things just in case um but since we were all the way in the back i feel like the camera couldn't really see us they weren't really listening to us they weren't paying attention so production had like no idea that i was going to do this that i was going to do what i'm what we'll see me do um 
So just in that moment on the way to this challenge, I was just like, all right, this is my moment where I just have to like completely undo these expectations that everyone has of me, that I'm this nice girl, I'm the sweet girl. Everyone called me like the realest girl in the house. And I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna do this. And it's just gonna be this like weird, bizarre moment that everyone's gonna be like, what the heck, you know, happened here? I just wanted to like, yeah, take control and like have it be this like blip in the matrix or something. Even though of course I knew they would like subsume it into their own narrative. I honestly thought their song was really good. I was like, there's no way we can be Melody and Felicia. But I mean, at this point, my plan was in motion anyway with Dana, she was gonna play along. Like we had decided, <laughs> we had decided we would, you'll see, we'll, we'll start singing. And then in the middle, I'll be like, Dana, stop. And she'll be like, what? Um, what we didn't talk about is how we would handle it afterwards. And you'll see that aftermath was like improvised. Um, and it got intense. I can't believe Dana was in on it. Oh my God, too spelled. Yeah, Dana was in on it, but she did such a good job of pretending that she wasn't. Her name is Carrie. She's singing Frank Love's Muscle Tees. My heart is pounding. See, this is all fake. I'm so friggin' nervous. Carrie's not nervous at all. She has... Yeah, she has like a legitimately good singing voice. The rest of us were like, honestly, everyone else is has nightmare voices. <laughs> oh, I forgot the word. <laughs> if there had been a spinoff, who do you think would have gotten it? Unfortunately, definitely not me. Um, I hope Kathy would have gotten it because Kathy, in my mind, was the most entertaining and she was the runner up of the show. So it should have been Kathy, um, but you know, I don't think this show was popular enough for anyone to get a spin off. <laughs> like the worst show ever, <laughs> which makes it the best show ever. Cause it's like the worst show ever. I don't think Marilyn Monroe wiggled that much when she sang happy birthday to the president. You got one more act, singing a song that they titled Frank Loves Sleeping In. Annie and Dana. Come on up. So me and Annie are the last ones to go to the stage, <laughs> and I feel great. I mean, our lyrics, I feel like, are better than the other girls. Our lyrics were really I'm good. Fun. I just, I'm excited. In my sleep, I'm dreaming of you. I'm doing my, like, best possible singing what, that I can do. They cut out. During the chorus, I can tell that me and Dana are starting to get a little bit off. And then I had to like invent this narrative of like what happened. Like, cause I had to play along with like production. But like, obviously this was all planned. So you can see she's laughing. Did she just say what I see? Dana's laughing because she knows what's about to happen. Freaky. It's about love. I think it's gonna stick. It's not about pussy or dick. Whoa, okay. They did not. They're just showing all the words. <laughs> okay, when this aired on V8. When this aired on VH1, they bleeped, I'm pretty sure, those words. Or maybe not. Those are the worst words that I said. Don't you? I think it's a catchy song. See, Dana is laughing hysterically. I mean, she just took a dump on stage with her mouth. <laughs> Susan is also laughing. Susan was also trying really hard not to laugh, but she was like pretending to be mad. Okay, so what was crazy about this moment is like, 
after I sang, literally everyone was silent. Every, like the whole room production, everyone was silent, which was very unusual because they were literally all in shock. They had not been expecting it. And so then that's when Susan and Gary like stepped in and were just like, what are you doing? Cause everyone's just like, what is happening? This is not how this like challenge was supposed to go. And like, <laughs> she's doing such a good job of pretending to be mad, but she was like laughing. <laughs> They're never gonna remember my bad performance after this. Um, but like normally what happened is everyone would sing their song twice. Why would she do that when I but like when this happened, like so they, everyone was just, just in shock that everything just started to crumble. So at this point, I think Dana realized like, uh-oh, like I don't want them to think I was part of this. So she starts crying. Did more harm. <laughs> Good. So I saw um, <laughs> and so then Dana was super convincing at crying and being upset like everyone believed her and this weird thing started to happen where the girl other girls started to realize wait Annie isn't the person that we thought she was and they all started being really weird to me like we had been friends and they all like who is this person so now like Dana's mad at me and we're in this fight so now we have this crazy fight and this was this was improvised i was just like trying to go with this i want to slap her for saying all those in front of frank's but she was really convincing i was just trying to match her authenticity because i just feel like yeah, i'm like trying so hard to cry here don't know how to get his attention but i like i can't trust you like i don't want to be in the same room with you it's so interesting to everyone responds to try and patch him with the blip in the matrix to try and keep the reality of the show yeah i mean and also another thing that happened here um uh, another thing that happened here is the story producer started coming out and the story producer is laying into me and she's just like annie what's wrong with you you better like make this right you better apologize to dana all this stuff they tried to amp up the drama at this moment and get me to like um confront dana more Cause like, I was like, I'm sorry. And then I kind of walked away and they were like, what's wrong with you? You better go out there and apologize to Dana. You ruined her chances, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up yelling at the producer and being like, get the fuck away from me. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> me and Dana are best friends in the house. Maybe. Actually, maybe we were best friends in the house. <laughs> Dana's good. Oh, this is so funny because now Dana turns it around on Melody, which is great reality TV, um, like strategy because Dana was in on it with me. We were friends. She's not going to be mad at me. She somehow turns this anger in, at me into Melody, which is someone that she views as future competition. Um, and we won't see it, but the Melody Dana drama continues into future episodes. So Dana, and Dana actually becomes a villain in future episodes. So she, she was able to like turn my situation into like more screen time for her because she like faked all this drama. Um, but the producers told Melody to come over to talk to me because they're like, Annie's crying. You got to go and like comfort her. So like, you can start to see how all the drama gets manipulated. Producers tell Melody to come over to comfort me. Dana is like, oh, well, fuck Melody for like doing that. And then that evolves the drama. Thank you everybody for participating. And at this point, I'm just like, oh, like pretending to be like sad or whatever. Cause I'm like, oh, I was mean to Dana. But like after this, the girls didn't really talk to me cause they were really weirded out. Cause they had this idea of who I was and like when I did that, it turns out like I wasn't who they thought um, I was. Wasn't who they thought I was. And I think that was really weird for them. Um, and after the show came out, I wrote some articles that got published about how the whole thing was a performance. And then I think they understood more where I was coming from. And then when I saw them, like they were like, yeah, like you're all performing, you know, no big deal. Like it's cool that you wrote about it and like framed it in that way. 
so they understood where I was coming from. But definitely at this point, they were just like, who is this girl and what has she done? So I was just kind of being quiet. And I also kind of knew I was getting voted off that night. So I was just kind of like, okay, this is the path that I set out for myself. And, you know, that's what's happening. And, you know, I just have to accept that. And I knew that I would get kicked off because I didn't follow the script that the producers had set out for me. Dana's mom is crazy. She should have gotten her own spin-off. She's the only one that can understand what I'm going through right now. I got in a fight with this girl today because she said pussy and dick and balls when I'm wow. I'm singing Frank a song. Okay, with a microphone. Do you consider this moment okay, amongst so the cast acting or reality? Although it was a fabricated situation, people ran with it to begin real drama. And then came over to me and Um I would say it's like it's definitely more fabricated than other moments for sure. She's on a fucking date with Frank. Um like it's definitely like a continuum and this whole part is definitely more on the fabricated end of the continuum because like all these feelings that dana is feeling those are all fake like she's not actually mad at melody she's not mad at me like this is all fabricated by dana um i fabricated the moment melody is being real to a certain extent but you know only to a certain extent did you get the same sense of weirdness from the producers after that? Um, they were, the producers were mad at me. They weren't weirded out, they were mad because they felt um, betrayed and like duped, I think, because they thought I was a malleable, maybe stupid person. Not that these other girls are, but half of the girls are kind of stupid and malleable and the other half of the girls know that that's how they're supposed to be so they go along with it um and i think they thought she's lashing out on melody lashing out on the three most harmless girls in the house oh it seems kind of ridiculous thanks carrie harmless um so they were they were mad at me that i had done that um because they had plans for me they had this narrative they had a narrative narrative arc for me that they wanted me to follow and I decided not to follow that so they were pissed um that's why they were like literally getting in my face and like screaming at me um and then like after that just kind of like blacklisted me in a way um like I knew also that if there was like other spin-off shows or something that I would definitely not get on those <laughs> this is actually really amazing that this is the unedited version of the show because like when this aired on vh1 they bleeped all those so that's exciting we expect coming out of your mouth that was like a shocker do you know what it is like honestly like i just like flipped out so i had to then like i had to like rationalize what i did within the narrative um i don't know why i felt like i had to do that but I wasn't, I don't know, for me to be like, surprise, I'm a performance artist. I don't know, that just would have been like, lame, I think. I don't know. I do get a little jealous. It's just like hard, but I just feel like, you know, if you're not like- It would have been too much of like a gotcha thing. And I didn't want anyone to feel, like at least anyone, viewers at home, just be like, oh, okay. I don't know, I just wanted to be more complex than that. Just more of this idea that people see me one way, but really I'm not that way at all. Um, and then obviously, you know, if you can assume, if you can think that about me, maybe these other girls, you see them one way, but really they're not that way at all. So just to break these stereotypes that they were forming about all these women. Like if I break my stereotype, then other people's stereotypes maybe would start to be questioned. I'm laughing. Was there ever a moment where you thought you could leverage this moment to stay on? Um. There's a knock on the door in the middle of dinner. Who could this possibly be? I don't know. I was. I felt. I felt pretty sure that I was going home. Um. And I have a little surprise for you. And that it was out of my control at that point. Okay. All right. 
So my mom's friends. But this woman, this woman actually actually had really bad hearing, and so she had an earpiece on that was up so high that we could hear, or at least I could hear what the producers were saying to her, um, to in her ear. So I could hear the questions that they were telling her to. Uh, I could I could hear what they were telling her to say before she said it, which was very illuminating. Yeah. You know, I've seen Marianne read olive oil before, and a lot of times she's right on the money. Okay. Now, as I pour the oil. See, so this is like another way they control the narrative. It's because the producers are literally telling her what to say. I see that you're going to have many children in your future. She just had a baby. Oh, I want more than four. Yeah, one baby, so. <laughs> I don't really want that many kids. <laughs> this, this, is, this looks like closeness to someone. See how these two just keep staying together. Uh, have you been close to someone recently? Um. <laughs> oh, Frank told me after the show ended that he wished he had picked Kathy, that Kathy had won. He regretted choosing Carrie in the end. And I was like, yeah, you should have chosen Kathy. Everyone's just like, does that sound familiar? I think so, maybe. Yeah, I was just like, all right, sure. everyone's thinking like, Annie, you totally made today like really weird or whatever. So I'm just like, I'm just not going to say anything because I already caused way too much drama today. Is there a close relative? Yeah, I think at this point, I was just like, I want to get out of here. I think um, I really felt like I wanted to leave the show. It wasn't fun for me anymore, and I wanted to go home. I think that was ultimately why I also... Another reason why I did what I did. I was I was ready to leave and get out of that situation. It was starting to become stressful for me, like the way it had in the beginning. So he really did choose in the end. Um, I think it's like a mix. It's like how do I explain the way someone who's a really good manipulate manipulator will make you think that your decision was your idea. Does that make sense? So it's like, there's like, there's some people who are really good at like, and reality TV producers are like the master of this. I'm doing, me and my friend Angela do a podcast on The Circle and we've met some of the, we met one of the contestants and he describes the way that the producers lead you to make decisions that you believe are your idea, but really is their idea. Um, and then like when someone asks you, oh, was that your idea or their idea? You're like, oh, well, that was my idea. But like, really, it was not your idea. So, and Frank is definitely someone who's very malleable, easy to manipulate. So was it his decision? It's like, you know, no, but he probably would say it was. I'm sure if he had really fought them, he could have been like, no, I want Kathy or something. But, you know, he's on the show. He's getting paid money. He's just going to go along with like what they want. I mean, that's what it comes down to is that most people do just go along with what production wants because they want to be on TV. But I think maybe to an extent he would have dated, um, he would have genuinely dated Kathy. She's got a sneaky way about her. And I brought this woman to my mother's house. Well, this is so interesting because Melody is like the, oh, honestly, the least time. sneakiest person like in the world. But they're like making her out to be sneaky. I was a little confused. Yeah. Next. So said you were hiding secrets. Can you think of any secrets that I might be hiding, Melissa? I don't know you. I don't know you that well. I should know you by now. See, I thought they were really good friends too, and they're like so questioning betrayed. each other. I thought Melody was my best friend, and I'm boiling up inside. <laughs> like, what did Melody do? Melody didn't do anything. This drama's crazy. And just, I feel like you're playing the fence. And no, after today, when you said the same thing you said to Annie, you came over and said it to me. I was like, wait. No, I didn't a say the same thing to you. I but the same, you. the same thing. Like you're comforting her, you're consoling her, and then you come to me. Like, I, don't I mean, I remember Melody. at this time being like, oh, maybe Melody is shady, and like I kind of thought she was shady. She has this. And then when I met her after the show, I was like, what was I thinking? She's genuinely like one of the nicest people. Um, and the fact that like 
even I was manipulated. I was manipulated into thinking Melody was sneaky, but she's like not sneaky at all. But it's just funny how people can like start this manipulation based on nothing. Whatever, I'm so over it, we're done here. I honestly don't know if Melody's a phony or just genuinely nice, but I, I hate to think that Melody's a phony because I do really like her, but Marianne saw that. I mean, she's also like from the South and you know how Southern people are. Some just like polite, nice, kind. I don't, but she I does, because I have he no does. To be upset. You faked being friends yeah. to me and all of a sudden you're attacking me. You've never come to me, not once, telling me that you felt. I just felt it today and I told you, I feel betrayed at the thing I told you. I told you I felt See, Dana's, like Dana fabricated her drama with me, but I was in on it. So it was fine. But Melody was not in on this drama that Dana was fabricating. So it was more intense. Um, I'm sure for Melody, um, cause like Dana was fighting with me, but I knew it was like fake. So I was like, whatever, I don't care. Elimination tonight. I think unfortunately that Melody is probably my biggest competition. She has everyone fooled. They're under her little Southern hospitality <laughs> charm. I see right through her and I'm totally in war I, mode and I'm going to take see, these out. Dana is really she's stepping up her strategy game right now. Like prior to this, we had not, she didn't get much screen time and she's like, okay, now I need to get screen time. Um, cause then in the episodes after this, oh, I remember when I went to go get my makeup done, the makeup people gave me fake eyelashes. Cause like when I went up there, everyone like knew it was my last night. So they gave me fake, fake eyelashes as like a special extra treat. Cause I, I also knew what was happening. They were like, we're giving you fake eyelashes tonight. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I want the fake eyelashes from my last night. <laughs> but in the end, you know, it so really yeah, it was, it was just obvious. Everyone knew, like, home. like no, you know, no, all production no, like knew what was happening that you put into your tonight. And I really believe that this challenge showed me. But you know what Dana was trying to do? Dana was trying to get Melody kicked off so I could stay. So it's down to business. What? I don't even know why Dana was doing that for me. That was really nice. <laughs> Really Maybe she was less threatened by me. Actually be. Her sense of humor really has turned out to be one of her best qualities. Felicia, I gotta tell you, that Sonic Boom routine was hysterical. I knew that Frank would be able to resist me. <laughs> Honestly, I thought their song was good. My sense of humor. Felicia, Felicia's smart. Please accept this kid in my basement. Mm -hmm. As long as I keep winning challenges like I'm doing, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm going to be the girl who wins Frank's heart. So Felicia ended up being the top three person. She took my spot. Carrie, will you please accept this kid in my basement? <laughs> Everything that was going wrong today, just... But yeah, I think, okay, so I leave in this episode. I have a key. I'm staying. And I think Melissa, Melody... This woman has never Dana won a challenge. And then One Felicia, day. Kathy, is Carrie. She really here for me? Is she just here for the free meal? Well, for now, tell me <laughs> but now. like, Melissa, you know, Melissa was like a Midwestern girl. You know, and so like, she was kind of like, I'm Jewish, so I'm not Italian, so I left. Melissa is like a Midwestern girl, so then she left. Melody was like Southern girl, so like, she didn't fit in, she left. So it's just interesting how they got rid of like all the like non white women and then like, Within the non-white women, like ethnically, they got rid of all the non-Italian women. You called out Melody for being a phony. You know, it's just I'm not like really sure if you're wrong or right. why? I don't know. Like, what's the but point of like perpetuating this narrative that only Italians can be with Italians? It's just bizarre to me, honestly. I'm just, I'm very shocked. I personally don't understand how he can want someone of her nature. Dana. Will you please accept this kid in my basement? Definitely. I think that the best part Dana of was very is charming. Is that Melody still doesn't have hers. That Southern sass. Yes. And only one key. Like, I know I'm going home. Just like, I'm like, at this point, I'm like tired. I'm exhausted. I'm anxious. I feel awful. I'm like, I just want to go home. I mean, I thought maybe like, oh, maybe there's somehow a chance I won't, but I was like, I 
I was like, just, I want to go home. I was ready. Just for being myself. I mean, I'm here for him. I'm not here to make friends, but I'm not going to try to change myself or. And I remember the amount of makeup they put on me. Like, I felt like a clown. But on camera, it looks great. See, I'm, see, that's when someone says that on reality TV, that means they want to leave, they're over it. Like, they don't like being on reality TV, they want to go home. Because it's just like, it's a lot and it wears down on you. And at this point, I've been in that, I've been in the house for two weeks. It felt like a lifetime. Like, so much happened in, in that two weeks. I learned so much too. It was really eye-opening. too nice for his type of lifestyle, but I have a lot of his type of lifestyle. What is his lifestyle? Sweet, nice girl. Definitely, he needs to give me time. <laughs> Melody, you may or may not have real feelings for me. <laughs> absolutely sure that Annie you do have feelings for me. <laughs> I do like Ultimately, obviously I love Frank in a deep here. way but I like everybody, my honesty. And honestly, the idea that like I was the realest girl in the house I was the one who definitely liked Frank Annie, this is kind of funny I think actually the person in the house who liked Frank the most was Kathy and Melissa. I think the two of them genuinely liked him the Annie, most, actually. I'm so glad that you were in my life, and I really hope like romantic. you and I can always be friends. I'm so sorry, Annie. I'm gonna have to ask you to leave my parents' house. And I remember in this moment, like when we're saying goodbye to each other, he's like, I'm gonna give you my number. Like, let's keep in touch for real. And I thought that was really sweet. And he like actually gave me his cell phone number. Um, and uh, we kept in touch for like a year. Like we would call each other on the phone and just talk and catch up. Um, uh, and that was really nice to have that friendship with him. Um, he actually stopped, we stopped talking once I told him I had a serious boyfriend. <laughs> See, I'm like really happy. I'm just like relieved. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'm just like relieved to be off the show at this point. Um, and then I had to wait for the girls to be done. Oh no, I had to wait for this to be done. And then I like went upstairs while they were all downstairs and I got all my stuff. And then they took me to a hotel and then I did my final, they bring me back secretly to do my final interview. So like literally half of the interviews you see with me, I had already been voted off. So like, you have to like, you know, even though you know you've been voted off, you have to like go back a couple days and be like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. Um, Ooh, wine. But yeah, okay. On the podcast Decoder Ring, which you were interviewed about your experience on the show, they spoke to the producer of these VH1 shows. Um, he talked about how he felt bad that reality shows and their narrative manipulation, which were supposed to be silly and fun, actually helped contribute to the rise of Donald Trump. Do you have any thoughts about this or how reality TV and politics mix? I mean, yeah, they're incredibly intertwined. Um, I think my main, like on this show, like the point of my performance was to show how like love is this political, becomes this political thing. Um, it's supposed to be this like fun love show, but it ends up being like, oh, well, who's really right for Frank? And that ends up being, oh, just these Italian women who are just like Frank. Those are the only women that are right for him. And so, I mean, that in and of itself to me is political, um, but this is a show about love. I mean, then you have a show like Apprentice, which is Donald Trump's show. I mean, that's supposed to be a show about 
what a great businessman he is. And I mean, everyone knows Trump is this total idiot, but what The Apprentice did was make him out to be this, oh, he's this incredible, rich, successful businessman. And that really like upped his profile because he created this, created this false uh, narrative around himself. Um, so, I mean, I think it's like, in general, the media very much shapes the political landscape and reality TV is just one actually small part of that, but there's so many other uh, parts of media that shape that landscape. And that's a huge reason why I'm interested in media as an art form, because people just think it's like, oh, throw away stuff, but it's really shaping um, the narrative and the dialogue of how people see things and how people believe in things. And that's why I think it's an important thing to look at uh, and to question. Um, like even like one topic that I've been really interested in the past couple of years that most people won't touch is pornography. I mean, to me, pornography, that's like, you know, it's just crazy that we live right now in a time where you can't say this, you know, there's like cancel culture, all this stuff you have, like, you just have to be more um, considerate in media, in mainstream media than you did before but in porn it's like that all goes like no one gives a shit like it's the most un-PC unwoke like terrible place and like no one cares and like I don't think that's right honestly I think like the way people are looking at sex should be held to the same standard as you know what we watch on our movies and stuff like that um but yeah I mean I listened it was really interesting that the Dakota podcast was able to get, I think it was Mark Cronin who did like all these shows, like in the reality TV world, like he was like a lion. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just kind of remember rolling my eyes at like everything he said. And like, like they knew what, I don't know. The people who work on these shows, like come up with these shows really are like, terrible like if you guys have ever watched the show unreal that is the most realistic representation of what it's like to be on reality tv um but yeah the producers were just like bad people most of the time and I didn't feel like he had much remorse I felt like he was like oh well what we were doing was innocent but what Donald Trump is doing is bad like he was trying to um kind of escape blame um but yeah, I'm so happy that you guys were here to like watch this with me and go through this again with me. Um, it was really fun.